You're listening to another ambitious entrepreneur network.com podcast, the voice for entrepreneurs and small business. Now onto the show. Welcome to the Christian entrepreneurs podcast, daily conversations with Christian entrepreneurs to inspire and empower Christian business owners to walk strongly in their faith. while build a thriving business that honors him in every way. Now over to your host, and Marie Cross. And welcome to another episode of the Christian Entrepreneurs Podcast. This is episode 166 brought to you by Podcasting with Purpose, helping you to stand out, be heard and become an influential voice in your industry with a podcast. And I'm your host, Anne Marie Cross, the Podcasting Queen. Now, my guest today says God restores the brokenhearted into his own masterpiece. He brings faith, hope, and love. So joining me on today's show is Maricelli Marte. Maricelli started a women's group about three and a half years ago in a moment of her life when she needed support and encouragement. And the group has changed her life and the way that she views things. And now she wants to help other women to be empowered and to show them that they are not alone. Maricelli is also pursuing her passion in becoming a life coach and a wellness coach to make a difference in others' lives. Now on today's show, she's going to share how God changed her life, how God makes miracles and he restores the brokenhearted. There's nothing too hard for our God. Uh, and also how he has given her a second chance. So many important uh, insights to discuss on today's show. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thanks for and it's a privilege to be on your show today. It's an honor. Thank you. Oh, look, look our honor is, is uh, ours as well, extending that to you. I think what's um, really incredible about this particular show is that you know, we are able to share our struggles and the challenges that we've had. Uh, and more importantly, you know, how we really leverage the strength of our Father, of our God, who we know loves us so very much. And um, being able to share that testimony, I think, can often be um, that seed of hope, I think, in someone else's life that may be struggling uh, through a similar situation. And, you know, it's interesting, Maricelli, when I read through your introduction today, so that three and a half years ago, in the moment that you needed support and encouragement, you started a group. And I think back to 2015, 2016, it would have been, mm -hmm. I launched Women in Leadership podcast to do exactly that for me too. There was a situation that I was struggling with. And it's incredible that when you create an environment in which you can often experience, you know, your own healing and growth, yes. that that becomes often the impetus that then has you go and spread that message to be the support for others as well. Take us back to that uh, time, if you will. Explain what was going on as much as obviously you want to share. But um, I think because this could really be the, I guess, the light for someone else who may be struggling with the same thing. Well, I want to say it was maybe 2014. I had actually remarried. Um, I was a single mom for many years. And being a single mom, um, it was hard. You know, Christian mom who grew up in a Pentecostal home, mm -hmm. you don't believe in divorce. You don't believe in failures. You don't believe in, in a broken marriage. So for me, I was ashamed. I, I felt guilt. I felt alone. Mm -hmm. And I struggled with that for many, many, many years that I actually walked away from God. Mm -hmm. And that's when, you know, as a single mom, you start viewing things differently and you start going out and you start hanging out and you start being around the wrong crowd altogether. Mm -hmm. And it was something that I was lost for many years. And 2014 was when I hit rock bottoms. I ended up in a place that I didn't know how to come from. I didn't have any want to help me. I didn't have that positive influence in my life. I didn't trust people. Mm. 
because I was rejected for when I was younger in that stage where I got divorced that I walked away from God. I walked away from the church and I blamed God. And it was a scary part in my life. And that's when I hit rock bottoms was October 5th, 2014. And it was the hardest moment in my life and in my marriage because I had just gotten married that year. Mm -hmm. um, and in my children's, I lost their respect. I lost their trust. And I had a fight to earn their trust. And still today, I work hard every single day. Just because of that little problem, it made me see who I was as a person. And I didn't like who I was as a person. And that's when I created that Facebook group for women. Mm -hmm. um, just to encourage others, hey, you're not alone. Even if you have a, an addiction, a drug addiction, an alcohol addiction that you can't control, you know what? There is hope. There is, God does miracle. He did a miracle in my life. And that's where I'm here today. So yeah. thank you for sharing that. And I think, you know, so often we will go through experiences and absolutely God doesn't love divorce, but there are some aspects of the relationship where you may try and do as much as you can but there are two people in that relationship and whilst we can control our own thoughts feelings actions in our reactions we certainly can't control the others so if there's uh, mm -hmm. a parting of the ways if you will a separation and 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 a divorce then we know that we have a loving forgiving god and one of the things often i think the enemy then does is uh, help has have us feel shame shame guilt doubt which absolutely does not come from god at all and i think it's a great reminder for all of us as christians that when we have fellow brothers and sisters who are struggling with something is not to be judgmental at all mm -hmm. but rather you know look how jesus interacted with others when they were going through struggles and he you know had compassion love forgiveness and uh, i think that's so very important so when you think back to the time that you started the women's group, when was it that you started to recognize that going in your own steam, if you will, through your own strength was just not enough to really give you the healing, the comfort and the peace I'm sure you were seeking? What was that moment for you? Or were there many moments? I think there were many moments, <laughs> to be honest. Um, you know, just starting the group at first, I had no idea how to run a group, first of all. I just started the group, um, just putting quotes, and I actually put things that I was feeling, mm. things that I was going at my current moment, that's how I felt. So I would just share that. And I mean, I was very quiet. I wouldn't come to the group at all. I wouldn't even engage to anyone. I wouldn't even have a conversation. I would just put quotes. Mm. And I want to say maybe 2006. 16, 17, that's when I started to change. Well, wait a minute, why do I have this group? What is the whole purpose of the group? What is the whole purpose of me being here? Mm -hmm. And that's when I started researching myself. And that's when I learned that I wanted to become a, either a coach or a mentor. Mm -hmm. So I decided to go that route and I started like studying other groups. Okay, what other women are doing to engage other women? And pretty much I just started coming to the group. I started putting myself in the group. I was pouring who I was. I was being open, transparent, uh, pretty much that's who I started becoming. And just telling them my struggles mm -hmm. uh, with alcohol, having the struggle with having kids and being a single mom and the struggle that I had, how to surpass that, mm -hmm. how to trust myself and pretty much I just started sharing that with the group and somehow overnight it started growing, growing and here I am today and, you know, I'm trying to develop something positive in there and we're trying to establish like mentors within the ladies mm -hmm. and that's my next goal. So. Yeah, very exciting. During yes. the time when you're going through the healing process and obviously really sharing some of the inspiring quotes that you found really helpful, were there some Bible verses in there that really rang true and that you had clung on to over that time? Yes, there was actually uh, Philippians 4, 6, 7. 
Mm -hmm. I always had anxiety and fear. That was my main thing in my life, the fear. Mm -hmm. And I had to lift that Bible verse, you know, just pray about everything and let God work everything out. My situation was I wanted to be in control. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we had, we can't be in control. We have to let go and let God work in, in our own lives. Mm. In order for me to grow, I had to let go of that control and the fear. So. Yeah. Something else that, um, you know, through the conversations that I've had with many people over, the, uh, over this um, particular show and the experiences that I have had through my life, one of the most important things that I recognize is, is so important and also in the Bible is around forgiveness. And forgiveness so much that we do let it go. What we may we may not be saying in our forgiveness that what they did was right, but rather being able to forgive so that we can experience that healing and let go of that energetic, all of the anxiety, the anger, fear, and everything that goes with that. Was that something that you needed to do as as well? Yes, I actually the one thing that I also struggled was forgiveness. Uh, with the people that I knew, my parents, my family. Um, forgiveness was the hardest to do because, again, like you say, you start developing these uh, feelings inside of hate and you start hating yourself. You start hating what the church is and you start having these resentments against these people. And I totally avoid the church. I would just go. Uh, to take my kids. I went to church so that way they have an upbringing in the church. Mm. But the forgiveness part came in 2014 when um, I, I hit a moment where I ended up in the hospital mm. and I was put in the hospital for at least four days. I had to stay in the hospital and I was embarrassed. I didn't understand how I got there, but it was the hate that I had inside myself mm -hmm. that took me to that place, took me to that type of environment. And once I got there, I had to fight for my life. I had to say, you know what, God, you took me here. I was brought here for a reason. So this means that I have to leave my hatred I had to leave everything. I had to leave who I was. I had to leave her there. And I had to come back as a different person altogether. Yes, yes. You know, um, something else that uh, is so apparent is that, and you mentioned this earlier, Maricelli, that previously in, in your life, maybe even as a child, uh, experiences caused you to feel rejection. Now, sometimes as a child, it may not really be rejection, but we just take it on board, don't we? Our thoughts and our feelings are um, have come about through the experience that we've had. And then as we experience other situations that can often, um, the word exacerbate, but, but really strengthen that particular feeling or experience that, hey, I'm being rejected, isn't it interesting that as people were commenting and saying things to you, I'd imagine that that just in increased the feeling that they don't understand that I was rejected and that just really shone a light on it. Would you have said that that's true, that, that the experiences that you were going through just made you feel even worse because you were feeling rejected and they didn't understand you? Is that kind of what was going on for you as well? Yes, it was actually a lot of the rejection that I took towards that whole negative yeah. environment. Yeah. And the um, it's just the whole part of having a female with two kids and you view her different because mm -hmm. something happened in her life. And at the time, back in the days, you know, they, it wasn't very, it wasn't something you talked about, yeah. uh, divorce. It wasn't. Mm. It was something that you shoved under the rug. She's divorced. So let's put her in the category as you can't talk to her because that's contagious. Mm. Um, that's going to run off on all the other women in church. And it was a, a very hard mm. place in my life. Mm. Um, yeah. So it, it felt like I was rejected. Yes. Yeah. And so to finish off that circle, if we will, on that conversation, it's really that you, you said you were hit rock bottom 
And then you realize, you know what, God, I just need to let go and let you uh, take over. And how when you went through that stage of being able to forgive and recognize that you were not rejected, you are not what others assumed or presumed, but mm-hmm. rather you were loved, you were forgiven, that that became your identity. You started to look at who God said you were and are. Uh, how was that different then? What, what sort of significant changes did you see both in yourself and how you would let other people a- affect you? And maybe even that, they changed too when they saw you change. What were some of the things going on for you then at that time? Well, um, I guess it was just his mercy. Uh, he gave me the second chance. And I got home and I started to work on myself. I've never worked on myself before. I really never really knew what that was. You know, have a, a high standard for yourself. I think I was a have very low self-esteem about myself Mm. and when I got home my husband actually started buying me books and how to become a wife you know how to be a a good mom because I didn't know how to be a mom I I didn't know how to speak positive into my kids life Mm -hmm. so imagine me being a negative person the only thing I was sowing was negative words to my kids and just viewing that now I see it now and just thinking back I actually started changing everything, how I thought, how I viewed things. If I saw somebody that was broken, completely broken, I would actually see something positive in that. You know what? We are all broken pieces. And God will turn that around and he creates a masterpiece. You know, it's that song that, you know, God uses broken people. And I started changing my entire view on life on, and on everything, on my kids, on my husband, as a wife, um, as a daughter, as a mom. And I started working on those relationships. Yeah. And so I important. started working on that. So important. Let's um, speak more into this because I think so many of us continue to struggle because we've clung on to situations, experiences, which absolutely, you know, from the from every aspect was unfair, unwarranted. Mm-hmm. However, by hanging on to that and by reliving it, if you will, by continuing to speak it, and every time we speak something or th- think something, we give it life. We need to let it go. We need to give it forgiveness so that we can start to speak life into us and of course we know that jesus is the living water and 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 obviously life so you said you started to really change the way you thought the way that that you spoke the way that you approached life did you feel um a difference in just you know sometimes we can go through life and feel just heavy we're just carrying this heavy weight Mm -hmm. that uh you know on our shoulders what, tell me, what, did you feel that before with, with all of the negativity? And did you notice that that started to release? You felt lighter and as your, your emotions started to change. How was that for you? Um, it actually did. It made a big impact in my life and in my husband's life and in my kid's life because they were like, who is this person? You know, I started to speak differently to them. I started to approach our situations in different ways than my kids. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's when it took them a while for them to get used to that person. Um, It took them a very long time to trust me again Mm -hmm. and to see mom has actually changed. She's not that party crazy girl that, you know, that selfless girl, you know, the the one that had no self-control so the thing is, for me, I had to develop positive habits Yeah. because I need discipline in my life. I need structure. Mm. So in order for me to change, I started doing structures in my life. I would actually wake up every single day and I would say, okay, Mari, smile, be happy, be positive, no matter what comes your way. And actually, I started doing that every single day. Yeah. And I did it for almost a year and a half. Mm-hmm. And that's where I started seeing the difference. And I said, oh my God, that actually does work. Yeah. But also praying, mm-hmm. asking God to heal me from this, to help me. Because you know what? It's very easy to go back to who we were. 
Yes. Because it is. I mean, it's something that comes back very easy. It's a habit. You could break that habit in 22 days. But the problem is, are we consistent with that work? That's yeah. what helped me. Being and I consistent. think, you know, as you would be um, learning through um, being, I'm sure, incredible uh, insights through life coaching and, and wellness coaching, we recognize that, you know, often as we are changing our habits, it is strengthening the neural pathways in our brains. It's scientifically proven. And it says in the, that's why it says in the Bible, renew your mind every morning, yes. every single morning, lean into me because we've got an enemy that wants to distract us, wants to discourage us, uh, you know, and, and things happen. But what we don't mm-hmm. want to have happen is that we trigger and we go back to our old our habits so you know the, the fact that you said it took you a year and a half that you set that it can, consistency if you will or that intention that i'm going to do mm-hmm. this every single day and i'm sure now that as you continue to strengthen that in your own life it really strengthened that in the, the life of your children your husband now who you know each and every day just earned more trust built more trust uh how they thought about as well yes Yes, it's, um, I want to say maybe last year, uh, that's when my son actually forgave me. And he's what, 19 now? He's in college. Mm-hmm. Um, he's doing awesome. My daughter also will be going to college now. And, you know, I, she was here last year with me. And I had, a, I had her. So it was me and her. And we actually grew our relationship. Mm. where the point where my daughter really was angry you know she hated me for a very long time and I had a I had a fight for my relationship to bring back that love that positive attitude towards my kids I had to change my whole environment the problem is that sometimes as women we forget that we set our environment in our home Mm. and I had to learn that I had to change that if I was upset my entire family will feel it. Yeah. So that's when I started saying, okay, Mari, you have to try to at least be positive. So I started playing Christian music in my household. Mm-hmm. And still today, I wake up every morning and I play my Christian music. And my kids are around that. They learn that in my household, there was no circular music, mm-hmm. just Christian music. And that's how I started developing uh, my friendship with my kids and my daughter and I mean, we grew closer and I'm thankful for that because only God does that miracle. Yeah. Nobody else but God. That's, that's my belief. And that's what I, what I saw in my life and in my husband and in my kid's life. So, mm, yes. You know, thank you so much for sharing that because I think so many of us can struggle with that. And often we can end up Um, playing that horrible blame and shame game at ourselves. And then unfortunately, if we don't deal with it, unknowingly, we can often um, impart that, can't we, to those around us, just in, not even in our words, but in our actions and just the emotions that we have. And as we know, you know, emotions set off energy and um, you can walk in, that's why they say you can walk into a room and you can cut (laughs) the air with a knife. And I think so. um, the peace and comfort that we so often look for as people we know as christians we can only find you know in and through him you know one of the things that i learned and you might have learned this too this is in my coaching um courses that i've done uh many years ago was that you know people will do the best that they can with the resources with the abilities with the knowledge the insights that they have and their actions will often demonstrate uh, that and so you know so often we can look and judge others um, but if they had different resources if they had different experiences upbringing someone spoke a kind word of or if they really knew Jesus as their Lord and Savior they and and didn't have the shame and guilt because sometimes what happens is we do know who Jesus is but we live a cycle of, of shame and guilt and just continue to repeat that once that's broken um, as you've done now, you, you've had better actions, interactions, um, and intentions, and that just completely plays out as you have a living proof into, you know, incredible uh, testimony. What would you say, Mari, if someone was right in the position where you were a number of years ago, what would be a couple of insights you want to share with her today? And there may be some men there watching that are in the same situation. What would you say to them? 
I would actually say, don't be so hard on yourself. Um, that's one thing that I was very hard on myself. I self-sabotaged who I was, you know, I, I would listen to these negative thoughts in my head. And again, that's where the enemy comes. Um, he starts attacking us through our mind, through our heads, you know, even though we feel something way, but you know what, that's where he goes through our minds and we have to guard our minds in order for us to break any patterns, to break any old habits. We have to come to Christ. We have to accept him first and try to let his cleansing work through you. Um, a lot of times we try to do God's work. You know, I, I used to try to hurry up, God, you know, I can't do this, you know, slower. I want to do this my way. And a lot of times when we take control, we messed up mm. and we might fall again. I could say it's been maybe three years. How many times have I not fallen? Mm. And I had to get up. And even though I fell, you know what? I got right back up. I apologized to my kids and I would try it even harder. Mm -hmm. um, and I will say to anyone that's going through that, you know what? Just try to find a positive environment. If you are around negative people all the time, guess what? The only thing you're going to be getting poor on is negative thoughts, negative attitudes, negative energy. And that's not going to help anyone especially if there is an addiction. Mm -hmm. Addiction is a very hard to break. Yes, it absolutely is. And I think sometimes what can happen when we're struggling with one thing, what we do is we end up just trying to shift a little bit and it, something becomes an addiction. And then that in itself becomes the issue that we're struggling with. But often if we go back to what was the cause of that, and often it has to do with our identity. Mm -hmm. um, and around that there's shame, as you've said, and guilt um and and often it's the and even the self-forgiveness i think and that's where you're talking about your self-confidence when that is so low it's all it's almost impossible isn't it for someone to speak life and truth into you and that's where you've got we've got to break that um and have some incredible bible verses that we know have them on side around with you yes. that's what i find because when yes. you know when we when we repeat that back and we just know those as we know the the word of god is the the sword of the, the spirit, then anytime the enemy, um, you know, comes up, we can just help hold that sword and swish, swish, swish. And, it, you know, he will flee. We're, we're told that. But as you say, and I want to just re-emphasize that it takes time. And guess what? You are absolutely worth it. Absolutely <laughs> worth it. Your children are absolutely worth it. I'm sure you yes. would agree. And so is your husband and the family relationship that uh, you're continuing uh, to, to grow. Maricelli, thank you so much for sharing that. Share a little thank bit more you. about uh, the group that you've created. I'm sure you still run that. And of course, uh, some of the services and support that you're able to offer people and the best way for them to connect with you. Well, um, yes, actually, I have a couple of ladies that help out uh, with the group. The group has grown. It's about 1,400 women now. And that's a lot. Mm -hmm. And for myself, I feel sometimes that I get lost in the whole process. So what we do is um, I have a group of ladies that if anybody needs prayer, anybody needs encouragement, anybody needs anything, you know, they are very welcome to reach out to any of, of us in the group. Mm -hmm. um, we also meet maybe every other week we have a live group and we read books and we talk about situations. We talk about different topics that has to do with life, that has to do with marriage. Uh, we actually are working right now in a conference uh, for the group for next year. So we're working on that big conference and yeah, I'm excited. I'm nervous. Um, and from this, I have learned to appreciate who I am as a woman. Because again, like you said, I didn't have or I didn't know who I was. I didn't have uh, an identity. I lost that in the process. Yeah. And a lot of these women that come in there, they're looking for self-worth, who they are, you know, how to get that back. You know, how, how can you get that back? Mm -hmm. And pretty much I, we try to establish positive and like you said, a lot of Bible verses. And mm -hmm. you could see my wall. Those mm -hmm. are all the 
my Bible verses and my prayers. And that's pretty much where I sit there and I pray. And yes, prayer is uh, an incredible um, spiritual warfare tool for sure. And, and one that builds us up individually as well. And what is the best uh, way for them to connect with you? They could connect through Facebook. Um, it's actually uh, women's uh, with faith and confidence. They could connect anytime, either through my name, they could find the group um, through my email, maricelimaite08 at gmail.com. Um, but once they're in the group, uh, we're constantly watching people that are there, you know, their engagement, uh, prayers. A lot of women ask for prayers. A lot of women ask for support. And that's what we're there for, you know, just to support one another. Because again, three years ago when I didn't have, I didn't have that support group. Mm -hmm. And like you said, it gives me, um, it gives me strength. When I help somebody and I see somebody growing, it gives me that strength. And it gives me uh, that aha moment, if you want to say it. <laughs> but Again, it, your ministry in that um, area, Maricelli, I think is just so powerful. I, it, from the conversations, and sometimes I'll repeat these things because people who are listening, and of course for yourself in this ministry, you said something, and I think this is so true. Women, even though we know as in the in the Bible and in the church, you know, that the, the husbands are the head of the house, but the woman, she can set the environment through how she shows up. You know, we are intercessors for our children and our marriage and our husband through prayer and through the commitment to reading the word. And I think, you know, for women whose self-confidence um, is unfortunately has taken a hit for some or other reason, that's where the enemy starts to really, um, you know, trigger and just wear away to the point that that absolutely flows on right through her relationship. So I think, you know, it's a time that we just plant a flag in the sand and say, you know, women, your level of self-confidence, you know, grow that, read the word, um, you know, ensure your identity doesn't come through the world or what they say or how many likes or shares or whatever you have on social media because often we can, <laughs> let's be honest, ladies, we can often look at that, can't we? <laughs> and it validates our self-worth. That's not where we, you know, our self-worth is in Christ says we are and we are loved. Uh, we are redeemed and uh, we are children of the, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And, um, you know, and from everything, you know, seek first his kingdom and all will be given unto you. But as Ellie, thank you so much for coming on the show. We will put all of those links uh, on the show notes, ambitiousentrepreneurnetwork.com forward slash TCE166. We'll also tag, uh, make sure we tag you in this Facebook Live so that people can then go and connect uh, through to your community on Facebook and check out the awesome work that you're continuing to do there. One of the things that I do for all of my guests is to close the show in a word of prayer. May I do that for you today? Yes, thank you, Amen. Fantastic. Thank you. Father, thank you for uh, the opportunity to speak with Maricelli and uh, that she could come on the show today and just share her testimony. One Lord where she was previously struggling, she, as she shared through her story, she really felt lost yet through your word, through your love, through your grace, through your forgiveness, she's been able to not only restore her own life and grow her self-confidence, Lord, but also impact the life of her children, her husband, her family, and now, of course, the work that she's doing in her ministry with other women. Father, we just want to pray for her ministry. We want to pray for other women, women that you have called, women who don't yet realize the incredible gifts and strengths that you have uh, gifted them with and that are just lying dormant. Father, we ask the Holy Spirit, to start really building those women up, giving them a voice that you already have destined for them. Um, and we pray um, that you break and bind in the name of Jesus. Any enemy, enemies, um, strongholds, will you break and bind them, Father, in the name of Jesus, that they too can step forward and speak life, hope, which we know is you, into the lives of other women and, of course, into their own families, Father. We just want to uphold everything that Maricelli is doing in her ministry. Uh, for ongoing blessings, for ongoing favour, Lord, because we know that uh, this is going to make such a difference in the lives of their family, in the lives of their community, in the church, and, of course, uh, the world as a whole. We ask this all in the precious name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank wow. you. Wow. Thank you, Maricelli. That was it's Thank you. So important. As I said, I repeat things that I'm sensing, and I really feel that uh, there's so many women 
who really don't know the incredible gifts and you know the hope that they can speak into others through sharing hope and and their own stories and you know guilt and shame uh, are just emotions that will keep us stuck and so the yes. story that you shared today and the hope and inspiration the bible verses thank you i know thank that uh, it's going to make a big difference in many people's lives so thanks again for coming on thank you for having me all right you've been listening to the christian entrepreneurs podcast Brought to you by podcastingwithpurpose.com. Stand out, be heard, influence. Want to influence real change with your own podcast? Access our free podcast training, including no cost and low cost tools and podcast production workflow checklist to get you started at www.podcastingwithpurpose.com forward slash mini training. That's podcastingwithpurpose.com forward slash mini training. Thank you.